as well from the upcoming. Lovely to meet you. So maybe you could just start off by telling us where you got the idea for this film, Ron's Gone Wrong. Yeah, I, I was watching the... Uh, I, you're all right. <laughs> you were giving it to me, sorry. I'll start again. Um, I was watching the Spike Jones film. Uh, Spike Jones film Her and I thought we have to make a version of that movie for kids we have to find a way to put into fun animation the whole idea of our relationship with screens and with the online world and at the same time I was aware that the most important thing in the lives of my daughter and kids around her and all of us really was friendship and it was what you know what was happening to friendship in the world of social media etc and you've managed to assemble an incredible car so what was it like working with all these people and was it incredible to have them reading your script it's always intimidating when you cast someone you've never met and you go into recording for the first time with Zach Galifianakis or Olivia Colman they're utterly delightful and charming people who loved the material and were completely on board and would try anything so it's a joy I love that piece of the directing process and, you know, it's not quite Black Mirror, but it does have some quite, you know, big issues that it's dealing with. What is the power of animation to reach both adult and child audiences? Well, you know, animation is such an amazing thing because it goes into people's homes and it stays not just as a one-off movie experience, but as characters that they revisit again and again. And I think animation has the potential to create movies that are really meaningful in the lives of kids and their parents as they grow up. And, you know, every animated film has a completely different look and feel. So what was very important to have in this one? Um, you know, it was really important that it was about kind of our real world. It's not futuristic. You want to feel that it's just around the corner and that it's like a kid living in an ordinary world with ordinary real world problems. And into that comes this sort of fantastic potential of the new device that every kid wants. And his, of course, is the disaster that turns into the best friend of all. And what do you hope that people will most take away from the film? I think that, you know, a celebration of friendship, I hope they laugh. But in the end, this idea that messy and complicated friendships are the richest of all and that you don't need to be curated and you don't need 100 followers. You just need one great friend. Because it's more, I mean, the issue of technology and friendship is more about children's lives than anything. They are so much more immersed. It's like second nature. And I think as a parent, you suddenly are aware there's like a digital playground that your kid is going into and you can't be with them holding their hand. <laughs> so we're all terrified, we don't understand it and they are bravely venturing there. And it's an amazing thing that connects kids but it's also uh, complicated and it can actually isolate you as well. You know, Ron to us was like an irritating customer service thing. He's supposed to be like when you get a device out of the box, right, Grace, and it doesn't actually work. <laughs> and, you know, it's like the opposite. Every kid says, I'm the last person who hasn't got an iPhone. And then, you know, this poor kid is the last one to have one. And when he does, it's an idiot. And we kind of thought of it as like the Microsoft paperclip that says, hi, how can I help you? And it's really irritating because it's so helpful and perky. Um, and then, you know, when we had Zach, he just added a whole layer of sort of humour and wit and the sense of naughtiness that you can't quite put your finger on. Um, I mean, you know, I'm not going to pick out one character over than the other because they're all absolutely fantastic. Olivia Colman as Donka is a Bulgarian grandmother dancing on the table. Like, that has to be a kind of, you know, lifetime high for me. But Ed Helms was so funny as the father. And we have Rob Delaney and Justice Smith. It was an amazing cast who, you know, it's, it's so brilliant as a writer when you write OK lines and they make them glorious. <laughs> it's 100% for parents. Pete and I wrote this film and I was, when I was directing the film, I was constantly thinking about myself as a parent and putting ourselves in it. You know, we've tried not to make it us having a lecture about screen time. It's not at all. It's us exploring the complications of that for all of us. You know, this is not the day on which I'm going to think about sequels. <laughs> After five years making this one, today we're going to enjoy this one. <laughs> the most challenging time was COVID, of course, when we had to move two, three hundred people into their kitchens to like animate the film. Uh, I mean, there have been numerous challenging moments. The best moment of all is today, because for me, when a movie leaves us and it becomes something that means something to kids and families, that is such a joy. Well, the very beginning of the story was when I saw the movie Her by Spike Jones, and I was like, we have to make that movie for kids, because kids are inside the digital world even more than we are, and it's not something that we're talking about other than arguing about screen time. And, you know, this whole thing about friendship, it's like the hardest thing that kids have to deal with. They, we send them out into a playground twice a day at school to be socially successful, <laughs> and it's really hard, and as adults, we carry that with us as well. 
So those were all the themes that mattered to me in the making of the film. I mean, clearly, you know, as adults, we're rubbish at technology, nothing ever works. So we're a bit more like Ray and the dad with all the cables in that respect. But, you know, I mean, technology is an amazing thing. It kept us all connected during a pandemic, you know? And yet also, you have this strange feeling of isolation and of pressure. And so it's the complexity and ambiguity of that that we wanted to kind of explore a little bit. The message for a young audience, really, is about, yeah, she maybe knows, no, it's about the kind of, the idea that complicated, messy, negative, you know, or complicated and messy friendships are actually maybe the richest and the most powerful. I can't even tell you, literally, ever since we named the movie that, the amount of things that have gone wrong, up to and including a global pandemic, and two days ago the dog broke the dish and ate all the apple crumble. I feel like I, it'll be good to get this movie out in the world and have a title that's like, everything's fine. <laughs>